If you hate playing against defensive style players, pushers, dinkers, lobbers, whatever you want to call them, then you've clicked on exactly the right lesson because today I'm going to be breaking down some match play and exposing a key reason why players like this person on the other side struggle to beat pushers or defensive players. This is most exhausting player, MEP, and the green on this side and on the other side is top knot. They both recently played in a match on the Tennis Troll channel. I'll link to the original video down below. I highly recommend you check it out. Over the weekend, I watched the match and normally with these videos, I'll kind of watch a little bit and then move on to something else, but I just couldn't stop watching this match because I kept seeing this pattern play out again and again and again with Top Knot. So today I'm going to dive into what that is, show you what the solution is so that you can win more matches against defensive style players like MEP. Anytime you play a defensive style player like MEP, you've got four main categories or different ways that you can try to win. You can try to outlast them by kind of beating them at their own game. I highly do not recommend that unless you just love super long, monotonous matches. You can try to out hit them from the baseline. That means kind of overpower them with strong, aggressive shots. You can try to close them out by moving forwards and taking court away from them and putting the ball away. Or you can try to draw them forwards away from what normally is their comfort zone back at the baseline. So top knot is definitely an offensive style player. And that's great. So for him, one of these two is going to be the best bet. Drawing them forwards maybe would be kind of like a plan B or an auxiliary play. Outlast, definitely kind of off the table. And that's going to be the case, I think, for most people playing against a really good defensive player. So if you look at kind of the, the point structure, as I was thinking about this, this kind of made sense to me. Hopefully it's helpful for you too. As a point progresses and you start off with the serve or the return, the next kind of phase of play is like a rally phase where the two of you are trying to vie for position. Then hopefully you can pressure that defensive player and knock them off balance at least a little bit. And that can lead to posing a threat of some kind. That might, that might mean a big aggressive ground stroke, it might mean closing forwards, and then finally you're gonna get some kind of finishing opportunity. And so everything kind of funnels down to this opportunity. It might be a floating volley, it might be an overhead, so on and so forth, but this is kind of the structure of how a point unfolds. If you're the aggressor, they're the, the defender, you wanna make your way through these different phases and try to close out the point. So now that we've kind of laid the groundwork here, this is kind of in a nutshell what we're trying to accomplish when we play somebody like MEP. Let's look at the skills that Top Knot brings to the table. Let's dive into the point play analysis. This is Top Knot here. And by the way, always big respect, huge props to both of these players for putting themselves out there on the internet. And thank you Tennis Troll for bringing us this footage. This is a quick montage of examples of Top Knot doing a fantastic job of making his way down that funnel that we just talked about. There's kind of the serve or the return, there's the rally phase, and you can very quickly tell that he's the one trying to be offensive here and kind of work the point and give himself some advantage in the points. And so this first point example is a great example of him dictating from the baseline and out hitting MEP. And most of the rest of these are gonna be him taking over the point, closing forwards, and then finishing things off towards the net. And this was kind of the pattern that I saw over and over again. And it's a, it's a great pattern. He should be trying to add pressure, apply pressure, squeeze MEP, and, and elicit some kind of weak response, and then put the ball away. That, in a nutshell, should be your action plan against a really good defensive player like MEP. And in the comments on Tennis Troll's original video, I was kind of surprised to see some people I guess I should never be surprised by people trolling in the comments, but some people seem to think that Top Knot didn't really have the skill set or the tools to be able to put away a player like MEP. And I actually completely disagree. He can hit big serves. He hit a winner with just about every shot in the game during this match. He has weapons. Where he's falling short is during these points where he makes his way down the funnel, he's getting opportunities and not converting on them. So let's take a look at a few different examples of how that happens. The first way that Top Knot left points on the table was he followed that general framework of trying to pressure, trying to come forwards, threaten, and then try to put the ball away. But as he made his transition forwards, he just didn't hit a strong enough shot. 
So you'll see a few examples here of top knot working the point, coming forwards, closing in, but then not doing enough with it. That last shot, for example, as he closes forwards and he makes the decision to come in and approach, something unique about MEP is that if you come forwards on a shot like this and just hit just a middle of the road standard you know, ball to the middle of no man's land without any particularly good depth or spin or pace or any other kind of challenging characteristic, MEP has the ability to just hit a winner, <laughs> to just hit a passing shot. Not all defensive players have that. It's part of what makes him a really special player. He's not only very smart and savvy and very high shot tolerance, but when you come forwards and pressure him, he has the ability to hit offensive shots. Even if it might look unconventional, he makes it work for him. So when you're a player like Top Knot, wanting to apply pressure, wanting to be the person who's taking charge of points, when you hit this type of approach shot, you just can't expect to give yourself much chance in the point. And the same thing plays out in this point. When he comes forwards, gets the advantage here with that, that wide shot, and then this volley just sits it in the middle of the courts. This plays right into the wheelhouse of a defensive specialist like MEP. Somebody who loves to scramble, somebody who loves to run around, who loves getting to that next ball. If you come forwards and put yourself in an offensive position and then just hit like a nothing volley to the middle of the court, then you can fully expect to be in trouble the rest of the point. So this is the first way that top knot got himself in trouble. He had the right idea, but then he would let MEP off the hook by just kind of hitting an okay shot. If you want to be more successful coming up to the net and converting and putting away balls, make sure to get free access at EssentialTennisAcademy.com where we have tons of coaching modules that focus on all different parts of the game of tennis, including net play, like overhead success, pinpoint volleys, and short sitter solution. If you want to put away pushers and defensive players, you need all of these shots. So go get free access at EssentialTennisAcademy.com. The next way Top Knot frequently kind of let MEP off the hook was by not following the ball appropriately up at the net when he would come up to the net. Just one quick example of this, but it's just a really kind of obvious one. He came to the net a lot and frequently he would set the point up really, really strongly in his favor like he is right here. And he would get what looked to be like the payoff shot, right? This is like the, that moment in time, we've all been there where it's like our opponent is like scrambling and falling into the fence on the side. We're like, triumphantly walking forwards to hit that finishing shot so we can like pump our fist and turn around and like walk back towards the baseline. And so he hits that shot and you can kind of see like angels are singing up above and everything is beautiful except MEP is like sprinting for the ball. And when you're at the net, you want to be on the same side of the court that the ball is. So Top Knot positioned himself fantastic for this shot. He pulled MEP off the court in, whoops, <laughs> in this direction, so he positions himself correctly on the same side of the court, which is fantastic. If you're gonna hit the ball all the way over to the other side of the court, immediately after hitting that volley, you have to get yourself all the way over to the other side of the court, because MEP is chasing it down. And so you can see just kind of a casual like, oh, he's, oh, Oh no, he's running after the ball. And it, by the time he makes his reaction here, MEP is literally hitting the ball already. And so it's too late to cover that shot. So if you're gonna come forwards against a defensive player, if you're going to try to close out at the net, that's fantastic, but you have to follow best practices. You've gotta follow positioning rules. Otherwise you'll get burned. It, like it, uh, this example right here. So we talked about hitting a strong enough shot once you get up to the net. We talked about positioning yourself correctly. But the biggest category, the reason why I, like, I just couldn't like, click away from this match once I started watching it, were these mistakes right here. And it's going to be kind of painful that I'm just going to click play and we're going to start watching through it. And you're going to get an idea uh, watching this montage of exactly what's happening. These are all examples of Top Knot being in complete control of the point and then just missing for no good reason <laughs> and just not being able to convert on the volley. And it, it might seem maybe overly obvious or like not super helpful to just be like, well, just make the volley dummy, like just, you know, make sure you finish it out. 
But that's literally what it came down to over and over and over again, was top knot coming forwards, getting the payoff shot, and then just missing. Maybe it was missing a, a sitter, like approach. Maybe it was missing a volley that came to him. Sometimes it was like a high sitter, like floating volley. Other times it was a little bit tougher shot, but still like kind of routine type, you know, net type shots when you're around the net. Volleys, half volleys, approach shots, uh, so on and so forth, and just, and just missing the shot. This is the biggest killer because as you work your way down through that funnel, you kind of earn the right to be able to put the ball away. You make the serve a return. You play the rally out. You get a little bit of advantage by maybe moving your opponent. You come forwards. You pressure them. You're, you're putting them under the gun. They cough up a weak shot. And it's like, all, like this all like comes down to this like moment in time where it's like, okay, am I going to be the victor here or am I going to blow it? and just kind of give the point to my opponent. And unfortunately, very frequently, top knot got to that critical moment and then just couldn't convert on the last shot. And I know many of you can relate to this. In fact, let me know in the, in the comments down below if this sounds all too familiar, where it's like you work the point, work the point, work the point, and then just blow it like right on the last shot. These are the critical, uh, if, he could, if he could have converted half of these in his direction, just the ones that were like the most routine and mundane, the outcome would have been completely different in this match. So we'll talk more about kind of what to do about this, but this is like the biggest chunk that has to be talked about if you're gonna beat somebody like MEP. So we've already revealed three different ways that players of all different levels can be more successful. And top knot, you just need to say, thank you for putting yourself out there. Hopefully you've learned uh, something from this video if you happen to see it. And thank you for sharing yourself in your game on the internet so that you know, lessons like this could be made. So we've learned a couple different things from his experience against MEP. Positioning, once you've worked your way through the point and you get up to the net, super critical. Hitting a strong enough shot against somebody who has offensive weapons like MEP, super important. And then converting on that all important kind of payoff shot, super important. And now fourth different thing that's super, super critical is developing a really rock solid overhead. And that's something that Top Knot needs to develop. Um, there are many times where he would come forwards and hit like a tough overhead like that one, but then on a really easy one, you know, same kind of thing as like the floater volleys, but this is just a different category of shot. The overhead is its own shot that needs to be developed. And if you don't have a very confident, solid overhead, a good defensive player like MEP is going to make your life miserable when you play singles, especially outside on like a slower court. So just had to throw that in. A lot of these are being made, but they're just kind of like tentative and careful. And you can tell that top knot is just not super confident or excited about hitting his overhead. It's almost like, a, oh, geez, I hope this goes in type of shot. He put away a couple overheads during the match, but I would say the majority of them looked more on the tentative side. So same kind of deal is like the, the easy volleys. If you can't put away overheads with authority and high degree of consistency, then somebody like MEP is gonna make your whole day really, really tough as you come forwards and try to close out points. So the bottom line is this, if you're top knot or 95% of all tennis players that ever watch this video, if you wanna be more successful against somebody like MEP, these should be your focus points. Number one, general consistency. I know that's boring, but the reality is, like we didn't even talk about that in any of the examples that we went through today in this particular lesson, but if you can't just hang and just like buy into the point with a couple of shots, then you don't even get to the point where you go down the funnel towards that kind of payoff type of shot. And I didn't even bother, you know, grabbing kind of the, the average like mundane misses that we all have, we, all of us, like everybody who watches this video just misses general shots for no particular reason. So if you can minimize those just even a little bit, take 5% of those away, your chances of beating somebody like MEP go way, way up. Number two, all round volleys, just general net play. If you're not really solid up close to the net, then making your way down that funnel successfully and getting the payoff shot down at the bottom is really hard. 
And there were a lot of times where, where Topknot made his way all the way down to that finishing shot and just couldn't, and just couldn't finish it. And that's super frustrating when you do all the work of the, the, the serve or the return, rally and then pressure them and pose yourself as a threat up at the net and then you just can't finish. So you have to develop your volleys all around up at the net. Low volleys, high volleys, backhands, forehands, angles, deep, you know, penetrating shots, everything in between. It's just a must against a defensive player. Solid overhead is also a must. They're, good. They're a defensive player. They're going to lob a lot. So if you don't love your overhead, you're going to struggle. And then finally, warrior mindset. What do I mean by this? Even if you develop all these different tools and all these different skills, and Top Knot already has most of, the, most of it. Like he's, he's got a very well-rounded game. I really respect his game a lot. You have to have like a, a mentality going into a match against a player like MET, where um, I'm sorry, MEP, where you almost, you have to expect struggle and controversy. And I don't mean controversy with them. I mean like um, you, there's going to be some kind of friction internally. You're probably going to find, oh man, this shot's not working very well today. It's just an uphill battle because they force you to work your way down that funnel and close them out. And if you don't have a very well-rounded game and everything's not firing on all cylinders, then it's just hard to beat them. So big respect to Top Knot for taking on MEP in this match. Uh, hopefully he gets to see this and, and hopefully he, he takes something away positive. Lots of different lessons for all of us to learn. I know that in the future when I play MEP, I'll be taking a page out of this playbook myself. If this has been helpful, do me a favor and click the like button. And let me know what you think in the comments down below as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.